Absolutely delighted now to be joined by the APS's Chief Government Affairs uh, Officer, Francis uh, Thank you, Francis, welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed for joining us again this year. Sure, a pleasure. Tell us a little bit about some of the big initiatives your office is uh, dealing with. Well, let me tell you, we had three big advocacy wins last year. And if you had told me a year ago today that we would have even one big advocacy win, I probably wouldn't have believed you. But the reason for that success is because the APS membership was so active. And we had put in a plan a year ago to develop a state-based grassroots advocacy network. Sure. And we did it, and it worked. And by the end of last year, we had 14,872 members contact, as constituents, contact members of Congress. 14,000. Just, just extraordinary. Wow. So more than 10% of our membership was active at any one time during the year, which is really remarkable response from our community. So tell us, what were the wins? So win number one is we got um, Congress to completely reject Trump's proposed budget cuts to science. Now, there were a lot of organizations working on this, but boy, did we do our part. So a year ago, when Trump made this proposal, um, Republicans were still in the honeymoon phase. They weren't objecting to what he had to say. And so we had to actually get them to say no to that uh, proposed budget cut. And we had to get them to say no for the first time on our issue. And so using that mechanism that we put in place, that grassroots advocacy network, we just started scrolling through Ohio, and then we went to a district in California, and then we went to the state of Missouri, mobilizing in each place, and we started building up opposition among Republicans to Trump's proposed budget cuts. That was victory number one. A lot of people worked on that, but victory number two was we actually completely reversed a, a cut that Trump had proposed to STEM education. Right. He had, proposed complete elimination of a program, we got it completely restored. And that was just us. That was the hard work of our forum on education and our APS leadership. And then victory number three, which was coming late in the year, and by then we had a very well-oiled machine sure. to actually go out and do advocacy. And there was a proposal that came out of the House of Representatives to tax student tuition waivers. And boy, did we push back on that. 1,600 students in a period of 38 hours hammered senators saying, don't uh, accept this provision. And by the 39th hour, the Senate announced that they would not accept that provision. So really terrific work by the community. So it's a, a well-oiled machine. So what are you putting the well-oiled <laughs> machine to this year? So there's no, there's no shortage of problems to address. So it starts off again with the Trump proposed budget. And while it does have flat funding for some of the agencies, nevertheless, embedded in that budget are cuts to really critical programs. And in fact, in some cases, outright elimination. So there's elimination of the uh, laboratory for laser energetics. There's elimination of the um, W-first telescope. There's complete freezing out of the development of a lab at NIST. So, so we're hearing from members about the effects of the budget and the proposed elimination of programs. Now, we can't work on everything, sure. so we've got to be selective. And so what we're trying to do is argue top line, argue for science in general, and then um, in the hope that the other projects will end up getting supported with that general argument. Well, Francis, thank you very much indeed for joining us today. Sure. Really appreciate that. My and pleasure. Best of luck for next year. Thank you. Thank you.